that front runner is uh it's a huge deal it always has been for me behind these dams uh, especially in the summertime you, you can never go wrong with the scrounger absolutely love the scrounger year round um let's see another deal on these lakes that you can do even this one uh your, your tva lakes as well there is ledges all the way up to these dams and you can graft the fish on them uh, it's another thing i do in the summer lake mitchell here actually has a ledge right there and you can graft those fish you can graft them really well with the water off and usually they won't bite but you can come back and catch them uh, when the water's on um, but that's that's usually a crankbait deal uh, don't be scared to throw big worms i mean it's it's a pretty much all your basic bass fishing baits up at these dams as well the just the main thing is and i you know i'll say this a million times is you gotta let the current work your baits especially with the fishing pressure we have these days uh it's it's really mind-blowing how many boats will be behind that one particular dam on a saturday morning bass tournament sometimes 20 to 30 i mean and, and they're all catching them but at the, the the main thing to learn is to let the current work your baits for you behind these things beginning your fall baits sounds crazy but my three favorite <laughs> my three favorite baits again are top water uh small scrounger put a i like a um in the fall late summer fall i i truly like we don't there's not as much current flow um i like throwing the little scrounger like a 3 16th or a quarter on uh tiny flukes are really good um Let's see, the little small Kitek flukes work great on the back of it. I'm sure there's a million others out there that you guys like to throw, but that's uh, another time of the year. A uh, little 3 16 quarter ounce scrounger on a spinning rod. Or, I mean, it'll sure enough catch a big bag. But you're, you're again, you're just drifting it in the current. I mean, there's there's nothing magical about it other than fine. Though there will be, there will be sweet spots to be found and. And you know, behind that dam, which is where I fish mostly, they, they change all the time. There's certain little areas where they like to congregate up there. And it's just a matter of getting the boat in the right position and uh, floating a bait bomb. Um, that's, you know, that's one of the hardest things behind the dams. And people, you know, a lot of people get intimidated behind it is just the sheer amount, amount of current that you have up there. Um, that's, that's uh, yeah, you, you, you got to learn. That's the main thing to learn back there is learning how to get drift a bait to a rock that's 40 feet from the boat and, and getting the current to take it perfectly to them. Because those fish are just like everywhere else in the country these days. They're so pressured that they don't, they're not, well, first of all, they're not going to really chase because all oh, they've got all the food in the world coming to them. But second of all, they're so smart nowadays that uh, it's got to look as natural as can be to, uh, to get them to bite. Clint, we got a question actually from uh, Jeff Hogan, and um, his question is: When the current has stopped because the dam's not generating, you mentioned that you, you you'll spend time graphing some of those bars at that time. What are some other things you'll do, like in the middle of the day when when the current has stopped? How do you keep your day going and maybe keep your bike going? Huh. Usually, pick up a spinning rod with a I like personally I, a little Ned rig st uh, style bait. I throw uh, a little. Nichols Lures Toadstool that uh, actually I did with a with a little brush weed guard on it that keeps it from getting hung up as much. But that's again that's a lot of spotted bass right there, and they absolutely love the the little Ned rig baits. And that man, that's one of the few ways to get them to bite. You might can catch a random one on a top water when uh, when it's like that. But usually, if I'm fishing a bass tournament, honestly. I leave the dam and go find the farthest back up a creek I can find and, and go flip for a good largemouth. If, if, if I'm in the middle of the day fishing a tournament and they cut the dams off, I'm running away from there. And the information Bass University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.